This is the Blue Eddy AC70. It is the big brother in Blue Eddy's newest lineup for the fall of 2023. This lineup includes the AC2A and now the AC70. Both of these devices have very similar features except for a bigger inverter and a bigger battery found in the Blue Eddy AC70. I recently posted a full test and review about the AC2A on my channel a few weeks back. So if you wanna find out more about this device, check out that video. I wanted to interrupt this experience for a few seconds to talk about the Bluetti AC2A giveaway. Bluetti has offered to provide one AC2A portable power station for a giveaway. Later in the video, I will share the rules, so please stick around so you can find out what it takes to win that Bluetti AC2A. Otherwise, if you're here for the Blue Eddy AC70, you're in the right place. Before I actually put away the AC2A, I wanted to talk about what Blue Eddy has done with their lineup over the last few months. They've gone through and eliminated some of the features that most consumers don't use so they can make a budget-friendly portable power station that still has a huge battery and a huge AC inverter. So to achieve those design goals and give you the best bang for your buck, they have eliminated wireless charging and flashlights for most of their newest power stations. By removing those features that most people don't use, Bluetti was able to bring in this power station at 768 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries with a 1000 watt continuous load inverter. Bluetti managed to pack all those features into this portable power station for an initial sale price of $499. And if you use my affiliate coupon code found in the video description, you'll get an additional 10 bucks off in the month of November. Powerlifting mode will give you some strange results for devices that require an absolute 110 volts and 60 hertz of output. Its inverter is also capable of powering resistive loads up to 2000 watts. So for things that consume a high level of resistive loads such as coffee makers, hot plates, and some kettles, the Bluetti AC70 can handle those loads. While using powerlifting mode, something strange is gonna happen with this AC inverter. Let's head into the studio so I can demonstrate those results. The first thing that you get inside the box is this user manual. Normally, I don't really like these user manuals, but Bluetti has put a lot of effort into making sure that the user manual is logical, easy to read, and has quite a bit of useful information in it. The next thing that you will get inside of the box is the actual charging cable. And this charging cable is almost six feet long. It's just like a standard cable that you would get from a computer monitor or from the back of an old desktop computer. The best part about cables like this is that there is no more power bricks. Recently, Blue Eddy and the other top tier power station manufacturers have gone away with power bricks and have almost all started to use these same cables. For me, that makes it easier to do my testing, but for you as a consumer, it's one less thing that you have to worry about replacing later if it gets lost or damaged. The next thing that you get inside of the box is this MC4 to XT60 charging cable. This is the cable that you would need to hook up to your solar panels. So put this aside. If you do plan to use solar panels to charge, this is what you'll need. The next thing that I have is this little bag. In this bag is the screw for this grounding port. You would use this to ground the portable power station to provide a safer environment if you're planning to use this in UPS mode or even out while you're camping. So this will put it more in line with a traditional generator as far as safety with grounding. And then the final thing that comes inside of the box is this XT60 to car charging cable. The AC2A did not come with a cable like this. I don't personally use these very often, but if you are frequently traveling and using this device on the go, this is a great option to keep these devices charged while you're traveling. So I've got everything set up for the first phase of the AC inverter test. I have this Joule electric kettle. I use this for cooking things like ramen noodles. You can boil water with it. This pulls up to around 500 watts. I also have this Dash Mini Toaster Oven. This thing pulls around 550 watts. So between these two devices, I should be pulling just around 1,000 watts, which is what the AC inverter is rated at. So now that I got that stuff hooked up, let's get this thing started. I'll go ahead and start this toaster oven first, see what kind of power I'm pulling. 550 watts from the mini oven. Now this thing does get hot, so I'm gonna move it over here and make sure there's no cables touching it. And now we're gonna start the water boiler. First thing I'm noticing is I can definitely hear that fan 
It's not obnoxious, it's not super loud, but the fan is definitely there. This is about the maximum load I would expect to be able to pull from this power station unless I'm in powerlifting mode. Since I'm in powerlifting mode, this thing should run like this pretty much continuously until the battery is depleted. This does have a 768 watt hour battery. I'm pulling about a thousand watts, so I wouldn't expect to get more than about 40 minutes of runtime with this setup. But fortunately, this thing cooks pretty fast and this water is actually already starting to give me a little bit of bubbles just about a minute into this test. The oven has hit operating temperature, so it is cycling on and off. And the water boiler is still boiling with about 480 watts coming out of the power station. So I would call that a win, at least for the 1000 watt stage of the test. Now I want to test power lifting mode and see if I can get close to that 2000 watts of output. For the first powerlifting mode test, I'm gonna use this heat gun. The heat gun is rated at 1800 watts. And what's gonna happen is, as the device is pulling the 1800 watts, it's gonna to start to make some funny sounds because it's being attenuated to keep operating even though it's not actually getting the 1800 watts that it expects to get. So right now the power station sees that it's putting out probably about 60 watts. So the heat's all the way off. I'm gonna go ahead and just bump that up all the way and see what happens. If you heard the fan lowered while the heat is starting to come out of the device. And if you see here, it says we're getting a thousand watts. So if I go over to voltage, you see that the voltage has dropped from 120 volts down to 100 volts. So if I lower that again, turn that heating element off again, the voltage should come back up to about 120 volts. This is rated at 120 volts, not 110. And so what's happening with powerlifting mode is that voltage is dropping, allowing this thing to fuel and get the amperage that it thinks it needs to keep operating. Now this device will run no matter what, until this shuts down. So let me try my hot plate. Now I've brought out what I would consider the ultimate destroyer for this power station. And I say that because this hot plate will pull more than 2000 watts. But the way I'm gonna operate it is I'm gonna start it at a lower level of temperature and then I'm gonna bump it up and see what happens as I bump it up. I do have voltage displayed and I also can see the wattage out here. So let's go ahead and get this started. I'm gonna start at a level three. The hot plate immediately bumped up to just under a thousand watts. It's pulling 916 watts, 900 watts right now. And it's pulling about 120 volts, just under. I'm gonna bump this up one more level to level four. I hit that thousand watt limit. The voltage has started to drop. I'm now only getting 96 volts out of this power station. Let's bump it up to five and see if it'll even run it on five. So I let it run on five for a couple seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up to six. So surprisingly, I'm still operating on six. I haven't seen any changes in voltage since level four or wattage. I'm gonna go ahead and hit eight and see what happens. I am actually very surprised that this thing is still running because this hot plate pulls about 2,200 watts. It's on its maximum weight right now, so it's getting less than 2200 watts, it's getting 98 volts and 1000 watts. The amperage is higher proportional to whatever voltage drop there was. And so you have to be careful. You wanna make sure whatever you're running in power lifting mode is a pure resistive load. If you're running some kind of precision equipment, you could cause motor damage, electronics damage, other things like that. Essentially, if you're pulling power to make heat, power lifting is your go-to function for that. I called the hot plate the ultimate destroyer for this thing, but apparently it wasn't ultimate enough. Let me get something a little more substantial. The air compressor. So needless to say, I will be a little surprised if the air compressor doesn't overload the power station, but, but just in case I have this heat gun rated at 1800 watts on standby. So, it's ready to go and let's just see what we get. I do have the voltage on the display right now so that when I cut that on, we can see that voltage drop as well. I guess I pulled about a thousand watts 
the air compressor. I'm gonna turn on this heat gun and see what happens. So the voltage is dropping to about 67.7. The voltage dropped down to 62. I don't wanna ruin my air compressor and I don't really have anything that pulls more power than this. So I think I'm gonna call that a win for this AC inverter. And I hate to repeat what I'm saying in a YouTube video, but if you listen to how this motor was running, it's probably not good for that motor to run like that. Let's find out how much power we can pull from the Blue Eddy's two USB-C outlets. They are rated at 100 watts each, so I assume that I should be able to get 200 watts from both of them. I have the small battery bank that is capable of pulling up to 140 watts. And so if I plug this in, I should bump directly up to 100 watts within a few seconds. Most devices don't really pull 100 watts, but as phones and chargers and things like that have improved, 100 watts is not an unreasonable task for something to put out. So we bumped right up to 92 watts. This is similar to what I got from the AC2A. The AC2A also put out about 90 watts per USB-C outlet. In addition to this battery bank that is charging right now, I also have my MacBook Pro. And the MacBook Pro is capable of pulling around 140 watts as well. So will I hit 180 or 200 watts with these two devices plugged in? Okay, so I was pulling 92 watts from the battery bank. I'm gonna unplug the battery bank because I'm at 180 right now. So it's gonna be about 90 per device. So that adds up, I'm getting 87 watts into the MacBook Pro and then 92 watts into this for a total of around 180 watts. For my testing with both the Blue Eddy AC70 and the AC2A, I'm getting around 90 watts from those 100 watt USB-C outlets. I've been letting these two items charge for about 15 minutes now, been working on my laptop, and this small battery bank is actually showing that it's pulling 95 watts. The output on the AC70 is showing 92 watts, while the input on this little battery bank is showing 95 watts. Potentially that might be a little bit of discrepancy in one of these two monitors. Another observation is that as we are pulling around 180 watts from this device, the fans are in what I would call medium mode. So they have like a low, medium, and high. They're not unbearable, but I can definitely hear that they're on. Let's talk about this display. This is the same style of display as what you would find on the Blue Eddy AC2A. However, this has much more detailed information. It shows me that the fan is running. It shows me when I have AC input and AC output, as well as DC input and DC output. Charging this portable power station can be accomplished by using either the AC input. Using the wall charger allows up to 850 watts. The Blue Eddy AC70 also accepts up to 500 watts from solar panels or DC input. However, there is a combined maximum of 1000 watts between the two inputs. While we're looking at the front of the device, you would hook up a solar panel or DC input here. That is an XT60 input and it's 12 to 58 volts at 10 amps. So to get that 500 watts, you're gonna to have to get somewhere into that 50 volt range at 10 amps. There is a cover on the standard car style outlet rated at 12 volts, 10 amps. In addition to the two 100 watt USB-Cs, we have two 12 watt USB-A outlets. We've already done our testing on the 1000 watt AC inverter that has these two outputs. This power station allows pass-through charging, meaning I can charge the power station at the same time that the outlets are on. And so right now, I have this in standard charging mode. In standard charging mode, we'll get about 440 watts into the power station. We do have the option by holding down the DC and AC button or going into the buttons in the Bluetooth app to enable supercharging mode. In supercharging mode, I'm getting 933 watts. This is 80 watts more than their advertised 850 watts of input. I do wanna caution you, if you are charging frequently in supercharging mode, you can cause the battery's life to degrade at a much quicker rate than you will by charging at 400 watts. Now I'm gonna let all of these things charge up so we can do the battery rundown tests. 
Before I do the battery rundown test, I did calibrate the shunt by running the device all the way down to zero and then charging it back up to 100%. It's finally time for the battery rundown test. For this test, I'm gonna use my MyHeat heater, which pulls around 200 watts. I'm gonna unplug the power station that has been fully recharged and I'm gonna go ahead and start the heater. What's gonna happen is the heater's gonna run down the battery, and I'm gonna know how much power I got in watt hours from the 768 watt hour battery. The AC70 delivered 668 watt hours from that 768 watt hour battery. That equates to about an 87% conversion. Most of the devices that I test typically get anywhere from 70 to 85%. So 87% is actually on the high side for that AC inverter conversion test. Now I'm gonna start recharging this battery and see how long it takes to recharge. While it's recharging, let me tell you about the giveaway. Bluetti has provided me with one AC2A portable power station for a giveaway. The rules for this giveaway are simple. First, you have to live either in the continental United States or Canada. The only other requirement is that you comment the word Blue Eddy in this video. B-L-U-E-T-T-I. To win this competition, you don't have to be a subscriber. You don't have to like this video. But if you do those things, it will definitely help me make more giveaways in the future. Between Black Friday and December 2nd, I will randomly select one viewer to win that Blue Eddy AC2A. I am the only person who will contact you if you're the winner. Bluetti will not contact you. No other companies or entities will contact you. That comment will come from at off grid adventure with nothing else in it. Just the three words at off grid adventure. If you are selected to win, I will notify you directly. You have 24 hours to respond to me or I'll move on to another selection for a next winner. I will never ask anybody to send me any money through Facebook or any other entities like WhatsApp, whatever all the other social media pages are. If somebody contacts you in the comments saying you won, pay shipping, anything like that, that is a scam. Do not respond to it. Now that all of those things are out of the way, good luck. I hope you win, and let's find out how long it took to recharge the Blue Eddy AC70. During charging, the AC70 got to 50% in 27 minutes, 80% in 43 minutes, and 100% in one hour and 12 minutes. All of those numbers come in just under what they advertise for this device. I am putting in a little more power than is advertised. This thing is advertised to accept up to 850 watts in the AC input, but I'm putting in just about 930 during the heavy part of the charging. So that could be a factor affecting that improved recharge time. Keep in mind, I do not recommend charging this in turbocharging mode unless you need that quick recharge as soon as possible. Otherwise, use standard or silent mode to help improve the longevity of this battery, which is rated at about 3,000 cycles with up to 80% of its battery life remaining. If you have any ideas or questions about the Blue Eddy AC70, please leave those in the comments. I really appreciate everybody watching. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. And now watch this video next to learn more about the Blue Eddy AC2A.